thank you very much, Johan, for this very, very kind introduction. And, and uh, thank you, Matt, um, Jan, uh, uh, and, and everybody for uh, inviting me here. Um, today is really a, um, a, a very historic day um, because I'm just coming from the election of the Director General of WHO. And uh, Dr. Tedros has been re-elected um, to WHO. And uh, it was actually a very uh, emotional moment as well because he was talking about his journey um, and um, uh, the way he uh, grew up uh, in Ethiopia um, uh, as uh, a child of very poor parents. Um, and uh, his br younger brother dying of uh, uh, a disease which is preventable, a sort of measles-like uh, disease. Um, and uh, he then uh, just described the, the journey he made to, to come to WHO and how lucky um, uh, he was uh, despite uh, you know, this, this very harsh uh, uh, family history. Um, and um, so uh, it's, it's, it's in this uh, historic um, day that we're also celebrating our collaboration. And uh, it is actually very, very timely to um, celebrate the achievements of RDI, of what you have achieved, you as a community, uh, in these very shaky times. Had we ever thought that we would undergo these many crises that we're in 10 years ago, I would have thought, well, the global diplomacy, the architecture that we have is strong enough to prevent a war uh, in the midst of Europe, a pandemic where we were not able to contain it. And the many, many outbreaks that we in WHO see every year, 200, 200 outbreaks that we're seeing every year. And this one we were not able to contain also because it was politicized. So there's many risks in the world. And uh, in this shaky, times with so many risks, there's health crisis, there's an environmental crisis, there's a social crisis of hate and mistrust, misinformation. And within all this, people who suffer from rare diseases very often take the biggest burden. They get served least very often they don't get care at all. And this is unacceptable. If we're talking about universal health coverage, just because a disease is rare does not mean that you shouldn't be cared for. And if we're serious about universal health coverage, that everyone receives the care he or she needs, and the support to the families who care, if we're serious about this commitment, then we need to put rare diseases first. And that is why we, Johan, Jan, Flaminia, Matt, we've been working together for now a couple of years. You're in collaboration with WHO, with endorsed this with a memorandum of understanding. And Dr. Tedros, you remember, was extremely eager to have this collaboration with RDI and Euroways. So to really um, also formalize our collaboration, have annual work plans, because we in WHO can, cannot tolerate that people with rare diseases are cared less for. And that is why I think there's also a lot to celebrate today, not only because we as WHO are on your side, but also you have done so much work in the United Nations. 
So the resolution that passed a year ago um, is actually groundbreaking because it also uh, gives you all the rights to um, be listened to, to be vis visible, to actually implement and, and um, endorse the right to health. It's not charity that um, you know, people are cared for and families are helped. No, it's the right. Health is a human right. And the health of people suffering from rare diseases, they also have this right. And that is what we want together to enforce, that you are not um, the bidder uh, at, the, at the entrance of the door, but you're in the room, you're at the table when it comes to decisions in healthcare systems. So that is the first thing I wanted to say. The second thing I wanted to say is that when it comes to services, it's not just any services, but it is services about accessibility, acceptability, quality uh, of health uh, services, for uh, people with rare diseases. So it's all those dimensions that count. So when we are looking at universal health coverage, it's these dimensions that we're addressing. And that is something that we want to foster through this network. We want to make sure that people are diagnosed earlier and that those um, uh, medical professionals receive proper counseling, proper advice from those people who do this often, so that it's not the first, my first case, and I don't really know what to do with this, with this disease, but that I have a network of experts that are supporting me when it comes then to the care and the, the identification of therapies and what, what needs to be done and in order, therefore, to increase not only the accessibility, but also the quality of that care. Thirdly, I wanted to, to say that um, uh, perhaps in this network, we want to look at pooling. So um, how do we uh, pool uh, certain di disease um, areas? so that we get the critical mass together so um uh, and and that might be then something that we're, we're going to look in in this in this collaborative network where we actually create centers or identify centers of true excellence that are dealing with pools of diseases where we then can um have exchanges with where I could see, like looking, you said in 10 years time, you're looking back at today and say, who was there? But also let's have a vision of what do we want to see in this network? And I want to see that there's exchange of experts between different centers of excellence around the world, which have pooled certain disease groups and who then um, are exchanging the knowledge, are getting uh, sponsorships um, from various uh, parts of, of the world and who then through this accelerate the quality of the network. I would also hope to see that there's um, a, a use of um, innovative technologies and that is um, you know um, we've been on, on, on teams uh, for two years now. Uh, teams only came in just before, because before the COVID uh, pandemic hit, hit all of us, just a couple of months before. And what IT colleagues tell me that, you know, within a three year, five year period, we're going to see a revolution of IT mechanism or IT instruments that potentially can also help us not only in the exchange of e-health and m-health, but also in surgery, in um, in clinical uh, guidance, so we can actually use IT technology to the best uh, if we do it right. So these are just some thoughts I have for, for this network. I'm, as, I, as you can see, absolutely delighted that 
uh, we will have this, this network that we're identifying these centers of excellence who will work together. And um, as I said before, I'm, I'm really a humble, but also proud that WHO can be on your side. So thank you very much.